What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here, and in this video I'm going to be giving you tips, tricks, and loadout suggestions so that you can easily flawless the Grasp of Avarice dungeon. My build suggestions will all be for Solar because Solar is absolutely OP this season. What with Revitalizing Blast giving you a 15% debuff on bosses and Radiant giving you 25% extra damage. So we open up with the Loot Cave and here you just have to take out enemies and deposit them in the Crystal. What you want to do is get as many engrams as you can because they will deposit into the crystal more quickly if you have less than 10. Like if you have 50, they go in 10 at a time. And if you have less than 10, they only go in two at a time. So you want to take out the wizard first because it is the biggest threat. And then you want to take out the fallen because the tracer shanks sniper shots can hurt. And then from there, just farm all the hive. Trinity Ghoul is an absolute star in this dungeon. So I recommend using that. But Sunbracers on Warlock are also great for spawn killing them, and Sunspots are great on Titan. Eventually, they stop spawning, and you'll just have to dip out of the cave to get more to spawn in. Then you want to head back into the cave and keep taking out adds. This will allow you to spawn kill the adds while you simultaneously deposit them in the crystal. Defeat enough, and you'll be on your way. So, depositing the engrams is the main mechanic of this dungeon. You get a Burdened by Riches debuff, and you will die if you don't deposit the engrams in time. You have 30 seconds to pick up an engram, and this timer refreshes when you grab another. So keep this helpful tip in mind, because it will come up later. So that is one way to die in this dungeon, and another way is the booby traps. They are plentiful in this dungeon, which makes it a super fun experience on your first run through, or if you are running with a friend that has never done it. So my advice for solo flawless is get used to this route before you attempt a solo flawless run. Know where all the traps are. There are bug switches in the first room that can kill you, the trap door to activate a switch, the drop down panels that can leave you falling to your death if you're a warlock. Then you have rooms with all the thrall. These also have trips on the floor that will trip spikes and kill you. I'm not going to show you all the traps in this video. It is up to you to learn where they are and to avoid them. Again, do practice runs until you are comfortable with the route that you choose. Personally, I skip all those side rooms by using Eager Edge to get around. Just like when I am heading out after the loot cave, I skip all those ads as well. Do what you are most comfortable with. Everyone has different preferences. For me, I prefer to go fast, but if you want to go slowly and methodically and kill all the ads and be extra safe, then you do that. I suggest a sniper rifle for the Shriekers as it is great at taking them out quickly. Another piece of advice is on a solo flawless run, you may want to skip the hidden chests. The first one in particular requires what can be a somewhat challenging jump, so it's best to just skip it. The wizards in the switch room are not nearly as threatening as they used to be, but it is still best to take them out as you activate all the switches. When you are done, watch out for the falling barrel. I think it will now just leave you one shot because there are no more physics deaths in Destiny, but it's still just best to avoid it. Again, this part will just take time and practice to perfect your route. For me, I am very comfortable eagering around and only killing what I have to. Once you've done all this, we are ready for the ogre boss, and again, he is not nearly as bad as he used to be. I two phased on my titan and warlock, and three phased on my hunter. A three phase will probably be typical for most players, which is kind of the sweet spot for boss damage in a solo dungeon in my opinion. So for some tips, you have to deposit 25 riches to get the boss dps phase to start. I prefer to collect all 25 at once. But if you aren't confident enough in being able to collect your second set of engrams before the timer runs out, then just deposit halfway through. One trick that you can do is to leave the acolytes up and not kill them at the start of the encounter. This way you can take them out to get an engram after you collect your first batch and this will reset your timer. However, if you don't do this strat and you just want to dunk the engrams, you need to know exactly how many you need to start DPS. On a warlock, it is fine to stand near the crystal in a well and deal damage, but for a hunter, I prefer to go to a side room to deal my damage. But if you leave the crystal and still have the burden by riches timer, then you will die during DPS. And if you have to stay by the crystal without a well, then you may just die to the boss. So again, figure out what works best for you. As well, Thrall will run at you, so be ready for that. You want to start DPS shortly after you kill all these Thralls so that they don't respawn while you're dealing damage. Ideally, all enemies will be dead when you start DPS. I highly recommend killing everything. Another thing you need to do is juggle the Scorch Cannon. If you don't pick it up for a long time then it will despawn and another Vandal and some Dregs will spawn in. You don't want them shooting at you either while you deal damage. So make sure you are always juggling your Scorch Cannon. 
I know it sounds like a lot, but trust me, you do want to do all of these things so that you can have clean damage phases. One thing that is nice is you can have a collection loadout and a DPS loadout, meaning you can swap to DPS right as you are about to deposit all your crystals. This is great because you have full control of when you deposit the last ones. On your DPS loadout, you want two time dilation mods and three weapon surges. Damage lasts for 30 seconds, so again, a Well of Radiance is really nice because when the Well runs out, DPS is usually over. You want to cast the Well just before damage. However, this stupid boss in particular is very inconsistent. You will hear the ding and sometimes damage starts like immediately, and other times it takes like 3 or 4 seconds to start. Trust me, these seconds really freaking matter, especially on a Warlock. I used Apotheosis Veil with fusion grenades and then Dragon's Breath and a solar fusion rifle. So when you cast your well, that is when your ability cooldown booster starts and that's when you want to be chucking grenades. So if the boss delays, then you are losing out on damage. It's really annoying. Then for my collection loadout, I like Karnstein armlets. And make sure you have a scavenger on your boots that matches your heavy on your collection loadout. Karnstein's is amazing because then you can run grenades that aren't healing and you can melee while you hold the Scorch Cannon. So when all the Thrall rush you, you can just melee them. This will give you restoration, so it's really awesome for staying alive. I absolutely loved Karnstein's here. On Hunter, you could go with Assassin's Cowl for ad clear and Celestial Nighthawk for damage. And on Titan, I like Synthos for ad clear and then Pyragales for the high damage one-off super. You want to cast the super right on top of the boss and not from afar. It deals more damage this way because the waves don't spread out. Then, because I was up close, I used Lament. It is great for staying alive as Lament heals you while you deal damage, and you can proc Revitalizing Blast and Radiant very easily by just bonking the boss every so often. This setup is awesome for really safe and consistent damage, but Lament does have some hit detection issues. For Warlock, the Dragon's Breath combo is amazing and super ammo efficient, and for Hunter, I used Sleeper Simulant. I would pop Goldie and then swap to Foe Tracer for even more solar damage. However, I don't recommend doing this. You lose too much DPS on a second swap. So I would just pop your Celestial Goldie and then have 3 Solar Weapon Surge mods on. And then just go to town with Sleeper. I like Gambler's Dodge as a way to get my melee back to proc another Revitalizing Blast, but Marksman is good for a fast reload. And also make sure you're running a Solar Loader. With perfect damage phases, you can 2 phase with this but I had a scuffed phase so I had to tickle the boss on the third phase. I definitely recommend hiding in that side room like I do though. It's great for protection as this boss hits quite hard. Sleeper is just awesome because it lands crits so easily. I tried Cataclysmic and I didn't like it nearly as much. Also, with Flint Striker, you keep up Radiant for the whole boss fight, so that's a really nice added bonus. Wow, so that was kind of long. My first few guides on the dungeons were the oldest dungeons, and to be honest, they are very easy so I didn't go so in depth. But for the next guides, I want to give all those little tips because they really do add up. It can shave off damage phases off all your runs. Like, if you are holding too many engrams, it will screw your DPS. If you are fighting off Thrall, Acolytes, or Fallen during DPS, it will mess you up, or you could die. And one final thing I forgot to mention is that when you are grabbing engrams, Every time you get 10, you will get your abilities back, including your super. So use your super frequently during the collection portion. If you have 19 engrams, pop your super to kill some adds. Then when it runs out, grab your 20th engram and boom, you will have your super again. This is a super useful mechanic to this dungeon that people don't use enough and it comes in very handy on the final boss as well. So after the ogre boss, we have the sparrow section. I have an old video on my channel that breaks down the route. The quality is crap because I sucked at editing back then and I had OBS issues so I was getting really bad stuttering. Anyways, ever since that video I've always taken the exact same route and it just works for me. So you can follow the route you see on screen or not. Just use whatever route you're most comfortable with and that you're most used to. Back then, before I did my solo flawless run, I practiced this route probably a dozen times if not more. Even if I got to the end, I would purposely die so I could practice again to get it down just so that it was second nature. I highly recommend doing this because this would be a crappy spot to lose your run. So when you are happy with the way that you like to go, then give Solo Flawless a try.
Onto the servitors, I'm not going to give much advice here. This encounter is boring and it sucks, but it is not hard. Use Trinity Ghoul if you have it because it is amazing for killing the adds. A kinetic shotgun is great for killing the servitor, especially heritage with recombination. And then I like to use an eager edge sword just so I can get around without the cannons. But if you want to use the cannons, you go right ahead. And the same rule applies about using your super every time you collect 10 engrams. Don't be afraid to abuse your super in this. Personally, I don't because I literally find it quicker to use Trinity Ghoul, but again, you do you. For collection, I use the same builds as before. Karnsteins and Syntheseps, and I know I said Assassin's Cowl because that's what I recommend, but in the background footage, I was actually using a Phidia Spathe. Both are great. You have to deposit 25 engrams here, but if you have too many, then just deposit those too. Just don't leave the area while you are still burdened by riches. Just make sure you're paying attention. If you don't die of boredom on this encounter, then you should get through it just fine. There is honestly just something about doing four of a thing in Destiny that is just tedious. If this was shoot three servitors, I think it wouldn't be as bad. The same way that you have to do four symbols at the start of Ghosts of the Deep. It just begins to drag on and feel like a chore. Anyways, enough complaining about this dog shit encounter, on to the final boss. For this boss, you have to deposit 60 engrams. And again, you need to keep track of how many that you have. Ideally, you will deposit all at once, but if not, make sure you keep track of this number. I use the same strats on all characters for this boss. So Titan, Synthos for collection and Pyrogels and Lament for damage, Hunter, Sleeper and Nighthawk, Warlock, Dragon's Breath, Apotheosis, Veil. Vale. I got to about half health on the Titan and Warlock, so a two phase is possible, but it is difficult but all three of these strategies should be a very comfortable three phase, which is always nice. Even if you miss up a bit, you have some leniency. Some advice that I have, make sure before you start damage that you take out as many adds as you can. Again, you don't want a bunch of adds shooting at you while you do DPS. Also, when you are grabbing the engrams, you should be going for 20 at a time. So collect 10 on one side and then 10 on another side and leave the rest. That is a good benchmark. Also, we have the yellow bar shank and vandal in the center. These guys are a pain and need to be dealt with. So off the start, pop a super and take them out. The vandal drops 10 engrams when he dies, but it can be risky picking them up because they sometimes fall into the water. That is another thing, don't jump in the water, you will die. So after DPS, these guys always spawn in. So ideally what you want to do is get the scorch cannon and grab 10 engrams. This will give you your super. Then pop that super on those guys in the middle. Rinse and repeat until they are down, and keep track of how many engrams that you deposited. Once they are down, then you are free to go about collecting. Doing this strategy will allow you to save ammo for damage and not waste it on the yellow bars. So yeah, that is the biggest tip for this fight, is to deal with them at the start of every collection phase. Then you just rinse and repeat until the boss is dead. Again, this should be a 3 phase, regardless of what character you're on. Anyways, that's it on the 2024 version of How to Solo Flawless A Grasp of Avarice Dungeon. I hope you enjoyed. And if you have never solo flawless this dungeon, and then you do and this guide helped you, please let me know down in the comments. I make these videos for you, and it makes me so happy when I hear that I helped someone. I have a ton of knowledge on this game and do lots of little things in my runs that people may not notice. So this guide was to try and point out all those little details that make solo flawlessing this dungeon just a little bit easier. Anyways, thanks for watching if you are still here, I appreciate it a lot. If you want more helpful Destiny 2 content, then subscribing would mean a lot. And like the video if you learned something. Good luck solo flawlessing the Grasp of Avarice dungeon, and take care.